Thank you, Brendan. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, everybody, who um, is brave enough to sign on today. Um, you're going to get a lot of great ideas. Uh, in addition to the ideas that you received, if you went to the other workshops around the state. I have two very special, three very special presenters uh, online with me today. Um, we have Olivia Wilson and Catherine Castanis uh, from the Dunedin Public Library. And Olivia is in charge of the youth department. And Catherine is, our, is the teen um, librarian there. We also have Zedra Hawkins from the Washington County Library. And uh, Zedra is kind of an all-in-one kind of person who does birth to death, I believe, almost in certain circumstances. Um, and they have participated in doing workshops around the state as well, in different areas of the state. And that's why we call it Workshop Summary 2, because I had quite a few other presenters that were doing workshops in, in other parts of the states as well. So I'd like to turn it over to my presenters. And thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. Hello. How are you? I'm Catherine Gastonis at Dunedin Public Library, and we're going to talk about how we can build a better world today. If we're going to start off with Battle Decks, and Battle Decks is basically a PowerPoint presentation which encourages teens, but you could use it for adult programming, too, to think quickly on their feet. It's a fun way to practice oral speaking and presentation skills. The manual suggests haikudeck.com, but that costs money. I suggest using PowerPoint or Google presentation slides. Keep it short, but funny. The images you use don't and probably shouldn't go together for the most humorous effect. For my flip presentations, I selected two sets of five crazy images. I had two teams for this portion of the flip presentation, and for each team, I did select a bizarre looking building, a weird food item, a funny animal, and two unrelated slides for each team. You'll want to divide your participants into at least two teams, and each team will select a presenter. Flip a coin to see which presenter goes first. I limited each team's presentation to one minute. That gives the presenter 12 seconds to discuss each slide. The goal is for the presenter to discuss the slides and tie the current slide into the previous slide shown. After both presentations are completed, ask your audience to vote which presentation was better, more humorous, what they enjoyed more. Do whatever works best for your location for the voting portion. You can have a raise of hands, colored cards, or something else. The Battle Decks game worked very well at most flip locations that we presented. Be sure to prov provide each presenter with a prize. If the prizes are less than stellar, let the winner choose first. I will definitely use the Battle Deck game I created for FLIP in one of my teen summer programs this year. Also, the manual promotes showing movies on the big screen to the teens. The manual does suggest many, many titles, including Mr. Foster and Metropolis. You may even have a few of your own to show. Be sure to verify that the movie you plan on showing is covered by your public viewing license. The Dunedin teens are enamored with Netflix's versions of Stranger Things. They've requested a Stranger Things binging party. I'm still working on the public viewing aspect. One way or another, we are celebrating Stranger Things at our kickoff party, and we just might have to watch YouTube's Hamster Things instead. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with Stranger Things, I highly recommend it. It is a 1980s movie nostalgia. While watching, you will be able to pick out comparisons to E.T., Goonies, Poltergeist, Stand By Me, and much, much more. In essence, a boy, Will, goes missing, and his friends, Mike, Lucas, and Dustin, and later Eleven, search for him. His mother, played by Renona Ryder, tries to talk to him, similar to Poltergeist's Carolyn, Carol Ann, sorry. Renona's house has hideous wallpaper, which I found a sheet for my alphabet wall that the only difference is my sheet is more of a green and their wall is more of a brown, dingy. Anyhow, she paints letters, Winona paints letters on the wall and strings up lights in order to talk to her son, Will. 
It's weird and creepy, and there are so many references to 80s pop culture, food, music, and etc., that it is easy to plan a Stranger Things party. Number one, things is the number one thing for Stranger Things is don't forget the egos. They play a vital role. Also, as Goonies never say die, in Stranger Things, the notable saying by the friends is friends don't lie. Also, on cockeye.com, they have a little game that you can plug in, whatever saying you want to have. And on the projector, it'll be a word wall with the lights, the alphabet wall with the lights, and it will do like a Morse code for you. If you would page down for me, please. In the 2017 CSLP manual, they are highlighting accordion book crafts. Their direction, there are directions in the manual, and there are also a ton of variations available using a quick Google search. This is a very inexpensive craft for teens that will keep them busy for quite some time. I would suggest using scrapbook paper for the book covers. Scrapbook paper comes in a vast assortment of fun designs. You can solely use paper for any of the accordion crafts, or you could use a recycled small jewelry box, which would give you a lid, and it's kind of cool. All locations of FLIP that we presented liked the accordion book craft very, very much. Also in the manual are painted bookends. The manual committee suggests allowing your teens to decorate your bookends for display in the teen room. This wouldn't fly well at my library, but I did enjoy making my Stranger Things bookends, which I will display this summer for our Florida Teen Reads display book. However, this is a neat idea if your library is replacing old bookends or it has an excess of bookends that your library no longer needs. You can use paint or Sharpies. If you are using Sharpies, I suggest laying them flat if you decide to seal them with an acrylic sealer. The Sharpies came off with my finger on our bookends, so I felt compelled to spray them with an acrylic sealer. The only problem was that I had them standing upright when I sprayed them, and the ink kind of melted. However, this look worked for me since I decorated my bookends with a Stranger Things, Stranger Things theme. The manual also highlights doing microfiction for teen programming. Microfiction is telling a story using the least amount of words. I recall a newspaper essay contest from when I was a kid, and I think it was the New York Times or San Francisco Chronicle or something like that. Don't quote me. But the essay was on how one's life turned out. The winning essay was, the whole essay, was not what I expected. The passage sums up microfiction telling a story as efficiently as possible. Page down, please. The 2017 Florida Teen Video Challenge is highlighted in the manual. Although this year's competition is over, it was due last Monday to Jana. Historically, the Florida Teen Video Challenge entries are due to Jana in March. But it's not too late to have your teens do a local Build a Better World video for your government or local TV station. Better yet, next year's theme is music. So start advertising now for your teens to make the 2018 Florida Teen Video Challenge. Encourage them to start working on it this summer. The videos are to be created solely by teens. Adults and staff cannot help. Of course, staff might need to procure the equipment and software. Please note, I've discovered that every year this is the absolute hardest activity to promote. I tried for almost 10 years before I had the right team who was interested. Our former team, Evan, won the 2016 Florida Teen Video Challenge, and you can view it on YouTube if you're interested. We remain very proud of Evan. I suggest keep promoting it to your teens. Don't give up. It is very rewarding when your library does win. As far as Knots for Love promoted in the teen the CSLP Teen Manual. Not to Love is an organization that crochets and knits caps for people with life-threatening illnesses and injuries. Your library can join the movement by having your teens learn how to crochet and or knit caps. This is a fabulous idea that touches real lives. Also on this page is 
Food for Fines program. Be sure to check with your governing body for your ability to participate in a Food for Fines where fines would be waived for the amount of food that you bring in. We are unable to participate in Food for Fines at my library, but we do partner throughout the year with the local food pantry, kids' clothing organizations, schools for, and schools, and also for food, clothes, school supplies, and umbrella donations. We have a giant white collection box in the lobby. Almost every month we are promoting a new donation drive. Also, the 2017 CSLP manual is highlighting community gardens this year. The city of Dunedin has a community garden. Our residents are very engaged throughout our community. The Dunedin Community Garden provides programs at our library throughout the year and often partners with the Dunedin Garden Club. That's separate. They are the Dunedin Community Garden and the Garden Club are presenting an Earth Day event next month at our library. They usually have plans, plants for patrons to take home free of charge at this event. The Dunedin Garden Club maintains our butterfly and our reading garden. We also have a seed library where many patrons can check out five packages of seeds per month. Due to the Department of Agricultural red tape, we do not take seeds back from patrons harvest. The seeds in our lot seed library are mostly donated by U.S. seed companies, Home Depot and Lowe's. We have two dedicated team volunteers who work mostly on packaging and labeling seeds for checkout. One staff member enters the catalog information and the circulation department checks out the seed packages as an ephemeral item. One barcode is used for all the seeds checked out. Would you page down please? And of course, Love it or hate it, Pokemon Go is very popular. Pokemon Go is a virtual game that uses GPS to help you find and catch Pokemon. Players can advance levels without spend spending any physical money. You can collect Pokeballs, lures, eggs, and more at Pokestops. Players create and name their avatar and choose a team. The teams are Valor, Mystic, and Instinct. Pokemon eggs hatch when the player has the app active and walks a specific amount of miles. You can do laps in the house, I know, but it won't work. I've tried. Dunedin Public Library is very fortunate to have four Pokestops highlighting our art murals, the Robert Burns bust, our butterfly garden, and donation plaque. Plus, we have a virtual gym in the outside breezeway. Have fun with Pokemon. It's a great conversation starter to use with kids and their parents. Our library has free Wi-Fi. And outside of the library, parents without unlimited data may be limited to malls and other places, but they can still learn about local history and effects in the community. You can easily start a Pokemon club to share tricks and knowledge. You can offer Pokemon crafts to make felt hats, which I'll explain later in the early literature portion coming up. You can do cards, fun views, shrinky dinks. You can turn almost anything into a Pokemon. Safety Harbor Library is set in a great location in their city. They are able to offer Pokemon Go safaris. The teen librarian there leads a walk around their library and a bit of downtown Safety Harbor. Depending on your physical location, this just might be a great way to interact with your patrons. This doesn't work for our location, but I wish it really did. I created a library skill scavenger hunt using Pokemon this past summer. I laminated Pokemon images that I found on Google Images. I, planned hi I had planned hiding places using books that don't circulate but you still have to have, such as India's Dynasty. I created scavenger hunt sheets that our young patrons had to use the OPAC in order to locate where the Pokemon might be hiding. Several times, clever patrons asked staff for information that turned out to be, where can I find this Pokemon? And it takes this opportunity to instruct the patron on how to search for call numbers on the OPAC catalog. Show them once how to find the call number in the catalog and on the stack. And the patrons are instructed to bring the caught Pokemon to the youth desk for the prize. Offer an individually wrapped piece of candy or whatever inexpensive giveaway you have on hand as a prize, and then you'll want to rehide the Pokemon. Change the scavenger hunt weekly so the kids have the opportunity to improve their catalog searching skills and always have extra laminated Pokemon available to hide because it turns out some of the kids just wanted the laminated Pokemon instead of a piece of candy. 
If Pokemon are not where the kids say they're supposed to be, let them know Pokemon are sneaky and they're not always where they're supposed to be found. Open your heart to Pokemon. Um, you build excitement. You create lasting friendships. You can start conversations with patrons of all ages. You can help build library skills and nurture library support. Encourage Pokemon Go because it's fun. Page staff. <laughs> Anybody have questions? Okay, we can continue on to Olivia. Before we do, let's give people a minute to, to see if we've got any questions. And again, you can put your questions into the chat or into the Q&A. Um, I mean go ahead, Jana. No, that's okay. I was just appreciating that you uh, mentioned the team video challenge. The, um, the door for that entries was last week. And um, even we have some interesting ones for this year. And they can all be viewed this year on the Florida Development YouTube page um, and they're all there available for uh, for viewing. We haven't created a winner at the point but um, a winner will be announced after April 14th. Um, okay. Did you get a lot of them? I'm sorry? Did you get a lot? No. Oh. I think that there's a reason for that. I think that the theme was a little bit harder to yeah. Um, have teens wrap their heads around. Build a better world is something you have to really think about um, and imagine and take time with. Whereas last year was sports. You don't have to think of sports. Next year will be music. The music will go fast. They'll oh, want to yeah, do that. I think, so. I think so too. And hopefully if the, the membership of CSLP uh, wants to run it for another year, we'll have prize money next year. Yay. Absolutely. That really is by far the hardest part to get anybody to do. Well, I agree. You have, you have to have that right team. It really did take me almost 10 years. <laughs> well, now, uh, Lake County seems to have an abundance of talented kids, right, Linda? <laughs> That's great. Don't be discouraged. Carry on. Keep promoting it. <laughs> Linda says yes. She does every year. Okay, let's uh, move on to Olivia. Hi, you can page down. That's me. You can contact me there if you'd like. If you have any questions. I did the flip presentation for babies and toddlers. The manual recommends kitchen play. It says find some pots and pans. I've just got a small play set at the Dollar Tree. Use pipe cleaners and pom-poms. The little babies and toddlers like to play with those. I did uh, finger family finger plays, which are in the manual. Matter of fact, the babies and toddlers is mostly finger plays. Um, but you talk about good things to eat uh, when you talk about the kitchen. You read books about food and families. You could even, with the little ones, make a pasta necklace. Um, I also showed at the flip presentation how to look up aslpro.com to find sign language. I refer to this site a lot because I use sign language practically every story time I do for uh, one something that we're talking about in each story time. But uh, we looked up words for food and also for building. Catherine's favorite was screwdriver. Uh, we also looked up words for different builders, like construction people. And But it's a great site, and they show you uh, a little video of how to make the word. So uh, I recommend using ASLPro.com. I also highlighted it last year for FLIP and probably will again for next year because it comes in handy. Uh, for the construction aspect of the babies and toddlers section, we watched Good Night, Good Night Construction Site on YouTube. The manual includes a London Bridge rhyme and bridges and cranes to print out. I recommend the flannel board toolboxes that they have to include in story time. Uh, there's patterns for them in your manual. And there's also a house pattern to cut out in color, which would be a lot of fun for the kids. Garbage trucks are huge with toddlers and babies. There's a recycle song in the manual, along with a garbage truck reproducible to decorate with colored tissue and glue sticks. I love that portion of it. They also ask you in the manual to scatter scarves or bean bags around the room and have the babies and the toddlers pick them up. I like that. That's teaching them many things. Plus, uh, they have a song in the manual that see the litter, pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up, see the litter, pick it up, we're not litter bugs. And uh, we would sing that while they were picking up all the 
the bean bags or scarves. Um, I love the Shape Song Swing Along on YouTube by Steve Song. Somebody in our department, one of the other librarians, picked it up, started using it in a story time. I use it every week. Uh, if you go to the YouTube for it, um, it's Steve Song's Shape Song Swing Along. And it will show you the different movements. Uh, I don't show the YouTube video. We just have the music, and that's what I play during my story times. Uh, someone from one of the flip workshops emailed me about sharing some ideas about a shape story time because they liked the song and they wanted to use it. And I suggested cutting out felt shapes and letting the kids come up and match them, using painter's tape to make shapes on the floor and have the kids move from the circles to the triangles to the squares, and uh, also cutting out colored shapes name tags. And then at the end saying, all the circles find each other and all the squares then telling the reds to find each other so that all the shapes are together with the different colors. So you're hitting a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, ideas there. Uh, I also shared the Open Shut Them song by Music with Mayor. I suggest you Google it. That's always a favorite. The two songs I use every week are the Shape Song Swing Along, because the moms love it, and also the Music with Mayor, the, um, the um, Open Shut Them, because it's a little bit scary, and the kids love that. Uh, page down. For the elementary age, the build in the manual, they suggest making a city skyline. It's on page 88. You use uh, chalk and black construction paper or those uh, pastel crayons, and you smudge for effect. It's really cute. It looks uh, otherworldly almost for a skyline like that, and the kids can be very creative with the different shapes. Uh, make the paper house on page 109. They can decorate it. Use your manual and the, um, the um, reproducibles. You can use them all year long because they are yours to keep. Uh, I did the Reader's Theater at the FLIP workshop, and that's what the, the librarians really enjoyed them. It was the house that Jack built. It was a big hit. They, um, made, they uh, made them laugh to do the, the, um, book, the uh, Reader's Theater. But make sure your readers can read before you do that, because uh, I've done Reader's Theaters before with children, and it really stops everything if the kids can't get through the sentence. I know that sounds harsh, but pick, pick your better readers for Reader's Theater. Um, we had a good laugh with the script. Make sure you read through it before you perform it with your kids so you'll know if they need any mini little uh, things to use. I know one of them was supposed to tear a piece of paper, and I didn't have a piece of paper to give them to tear, so uh, just simple little uh, props like that. Do some measuring activities for build. Uh, get some cheap measuring tapes at a dollar store or on Amazon. I uh, used uh, measuring tapes and did a program last summer or last fall uh, about measuring. And it was before I found this cool book that I'm going to tell you about. But we use the measuring tapes to measure things in the rooms. It was for a STEM program that we do here that Catherine manages. And um, we measured all kinds of office supplies. We measured their feet. We let them measure their heads, their, their wrists. And they spent the entire time on the floor measuring things and writing notes down. It was adorable because these are four to seven-year-olds that did it. But I made sure to tell them that a measuring tape is not a toy, that it is a tool. And I made sure the parents knew you know, not to let the children play with those on their own. Uh, the book I'm talking about, though, is Iggy Peck, Architect, adorable book about a little boy who loves to build so much that he gets on everyone's nerves. He builds a mountain of diapers, and that's great until his mom says, oh my gosh, they're dirty diapers. So the, the kids get a big laugh out of that. And finally, at school, his building obsession saves the day, of course, when his teacher gets stranded somewhere and everybody has to use their shoes to build something, and Ig Iggy tells them how to do it. It's a funny, rollicking book with great pictures to chuckle over. So I suggest that, Iggy Peck Architect. Uh, for build, you can have a free build with Legos once a week. Our patrons know that every Wednesday from 3 to 4 this summer, they can come to the library and build with Legos. If you don't have a large Lego collection, buy pasta. It's cheap, and kids love to uh, build with things, and they're very creative. You get pasta and glue, and you can build with pasta every week and probably not break the bank. Page down. For the live part, I went to YouTube to find a silly clothing game video to do a relay. Looks like a lot of fun. You dress up at one end, run to the other, take all the clothes off, except your own underneath. And then the your person behind you changes and puts the clothes on and has to run to the other end. Uh, rather than having uh, participants at the flip programs, I chose to show this on YouTube, and it's a lot of fun. 
um, do the clothing pokey, it suggests in the manual. And that one we we'll definitely want to be doing this summer. You put your hat in, you take your hat out, but it suggests other things like sunglasses in or your gloves or you put your whole self in. Lots of fun and everybody loves the hokey pokey. This is just a clothing pokey. Um, the audience sorry, participation at the FLIP programs provided us lots of fun when we did the shibby, shimmy prance jump dance on page 153 in the manual. Five or six librarians at each FLIP program came up to the front of the room and each one showed us one dance move and they were so talented. <laughs> we saw the sprinkler, the bump, the monkey, the robot, the moonwalk, all kinds of dances. It, somebody just jumped and that's their, da their dance move. Well, as they showed us each one, I wrote it down on a card and then everyone in the room stood up as Catherine played, are you ready for this? And I went through the cards calling out the move, and everybody had to change as I called out a different dance move. A lot of fun, very lively participation, and I was surprised that everyone joined in. I think it's good when they only have to submit one dance move and that doesn't feel too overwhelming, but when we put it all together and everybody's doing it too, it's hysterical. Um, the manual talks about a storytelling cube, which I thought was a great idea. I took a square box and had magazine pictures that I cut out. I glued them on each one on each side. And when you throw the box, you see what comes up and you take those words that come up and write your story. Um, I had a picture of a door, picture of a cup of coffee. Uh, on one side was a boy covered in flies. Another side had an electrical plant on it. And then my final uh, part of the, um, the die that I cut out, uh, the big square box or the cube, were cheese and nuts. So you could choose to pick two things for each child and then everybody write a short story about it, come up and share it. I think the kids would love that. It would be very funny. Um, let's see. Also, oh, the manual tells, talks about sock mon monsters. Every year we talk about sock monsters because they're so lovable. I read the story Don't Call Me a Monster, which is very funny. It's a, it's a monster who's very sensitive. He wants to be called Floyd because that's his name. And um, so it talks about how we shouldn't make assumptions that he's a monster just because he's got big sharp teeth and claws and likes to roar at you and hide underneath your bed. But uh, then after you read that book, uh, you have the kids each bring a pair of old socks and you don't have to invest in socks. We did uh, made a sock monster that's in the manual and I just took out pom-poms, glitter, glue, uh, uh, pipe cleaners, uh, felt, and just let them go to town. Googly eyes, of course. They must. Put one sock inside of the other sock. I glued it together with a fabric tack, which is fabric tack, which is a great material glue that uh, Catherine discovered for us. It glues so quickly, it's, it's dried in like five minutes, literally. And then they could just decorate their little sock monster. And I was so happy and tickled with mine that I took a picture of it and put it on my Facebook page because it just gave me a joy to make that. And I would hope that it would for those kids, too. Uh, also, in the summer, you could do Roll a Monster on page 227 in the manual. It's cute. It's a picture of a, of a monster, just the body, but the kids have to roll uh, a dice, which there's a, a dice pattern in the manual, and then uh, it tells you what you can add. You can add a, an arm, or now you can add a tooth, tooth or a leg, or add some hairy you know, hair on their heads, or add some googly eyes. And uh, they build, actually draw their monster to put it together. It was very adorable. Um, okay, go down. Senses. Make a musical instrument or a guitar or a drum or a guitar. We could also use this next year for um, Libraries Rock. I made the instrument that they suggested in the manual. I took a cardboard box. I cut out a middle of the top and uh, put some rubber bands there. Uh, then you could strum it. It didn't sound like a great guitar, but it would work. Then I took a, uh, to make a drum, I took a book tape cardboard and pulled a, a balloon over at the top of it and taped it on there and made a nice sound. You could make all kinds of instruments. Just Google how to make an instrument. We did the telephone game for the senses for hearing. Uh, one librarian said a word at the beginning and we saw how it came out at the end, which could be really funny if you have a circle of kids and have them say something silly, and by the time it gets to the end, I know I enjoyed it as a kid, and they do too. Uh, I particularly like this next thing. I do uh, old handprint or handprints on old book pages. Uh, you just trace around your hand, and you can doodle in it. And use your markers and your colors. Also, use stampers on old book pages. It really makes a work of art. Um, and speaking of works of art, 
your, you could have your kids zombify classic artworks by Googling the color pages. Uh, for example, like American Gothic or Girl with a Pearl Earring or Mona Lisa, there are coloring books online, uh, coloring book pages. Uh, get them out, print them out, have the kids make them into zombies. I know it sounds funny, but they would love that. Um, another game that we played uh, is called Not a Blank. And it's really fun. You get the kids to stand up and you hand them some object. Like I handed them a ball. And to see, that you have to say, this is not a ball, it is a, and some of our participants said, a planet up in the sky. And uh, I handed them a scarf and I said, this is not a scarf, this is something to clean your table with. And then the next person has to say something different. So that's a good one in your manual, not a game. It's called not a blank. Uh, you can make a marble run. I did a small one. The manual suggests you do a large one in a room, but uh, I don't know how much, what your space is like or your uh, supply of toilet paper tubes or paper towel tubes is. But all you need is masking tape, tubes, cardboard tubes, and marbles. Have a lot of fun, and that could be a whole program right there. We're going to talk a lot uh, in the census about doves, peace, kindness, empathy, and whether your basket is full. This summer, we're really going to be uh, stressing kindness. That sounds funny to say stressing kindness, but we will be, we'll be say, we're asking the kids to do an act of kindness every week and set, put that on their log and give it to us uh, when they get, turn in their book log. Uh, we just want them to be aware that you can be kind, and it doesn't have to be a huge thing. Smile at somebody. Help somebody with their book. Um, tell your sister she looks pretty that day. Just silly little, fun, fun little acts of kindness we're going to be stressing. Um, page down. I did want to also mention about um, the Discover portion of the manual. I didn't have a slide up for that. But uh, they talk about making leaf and shell rubbings, which is also could be in the senses, I guess, because it's kind of a little piece of artwork. Uh, I did the leaf and shell rubbings, but also have some other materials on hand for the kids to make a different print. You could make a nature journal, nature journal for the kids. That's in the manual, too. And also, using the reproducibles, there's a neighborhood nature walk. Uh, we're going to make seed necklaces. Uh, I got this idea from Catherine. I don't know where she found it. Pinterest or something? Or? No, I don't use Pinterest. Oh. Uh, <laughs> she stumbled upon it. We're going to make seed necklaces. You take a small plastic bag, like a little jewelry bag. They come in. I saw them at Michael's. They're very cheap to buy. You uh, punch a hole in the top, but you put a damp cotton ball and a seed, like from our seed library, into the plastic bag, put it on a piece of yarn around their neck, and they can tuck it in their shirt, and that seed will, will uh, sprout. Oh, I saw that idea from the Florida fair, state fair, a couple years ago that Schwarzkopf, Schwarz and, what is it, the high school in Tampa, that they had their 4-H club. Oh, and they did that. Uh, I'm glad. Give them their props. Give them their props. But I was going to say that um, once when Catherine did that in a program, a little boy had his sprouted, his radish seed, and he came in a couple weeks later, and it had, they had repotted it in a little pot, and he had his radish plant. He had to bring it in to show Catherine. They were very thrilled about it. My fan yeah. club for you. Oh, your fan club. Okay, that's all I've got. Any questions? Um, uh, well, I, I like the idea when you talked about the music ones and how next year was it would be great. And that mm -hmm. reminds me of the people that are listening in today and also the people that will be listening to the webinar in the future in the next couple of months. We are looking for um, people who are willing to film their favorite musical story time um, song or activity or play or puppet show or instructional five minutes tops mm -hmm. possibly ten depending on what it is because we want to create a melange of um, interesting videos that people would be able to utilize throughout the year instead of one workshop one time, this is going to last a lot longer. So yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great way to get to share things. That's how we shared Flip Flap Jack last year at the Flip is uh, because we had little videos of it and we could show them how to use it. And, and a lot of people have used that. Yeah, and that's really what you know. It's it's great to see your neighbors and have other people saying, "Oh yeah, I know that," or "I've never seen that," or instead of trying to take the time off to go to the workshop and trying to figure out time and 
the frustrations of trying to get to the workshops. And we'll, not to say we won't ever do them again, but we're just going to try something different. So those of you that are interested, please let me know. Um, we're developing a set of guidelines. Guidelines, thank you, um, for it so that we will let you know when that is coming up. Um, our Zidra is still there? Yes, I am. Yay! Hi. 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 How's everybody doing today? Oh, 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 hey, that picture's wrong. Uh, my mother made me color my hair. <laughs> so, she's like, you look too, you're too young to be looking old. I said, Mama, it is what it is. I'm old. <laughs> so my hair is now um, kind of frosted. It looks good, people. Tell me I look 10 years younger. So hey. <laughs> Hi, Linda. How are you doing? I see you on there. <laughs> um, I am Zedra Hawkins. Um, I'm I'm pleased to be here. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to having the summer of our lives. Here we go. Um, but let's remember, it is summer that we get to touch a child's life. And uh, what better way to do this than building a better world? Every day in every way, we should all be good stewards of our world. But Let's stop for a moment and think about what it means to build. You know, I actually had to look these words up. The ABCs of building are architect, building, and construction. And, you know, to become an architect, not only do we encourage kids to read, but to engage them, to see themselves in the future. We open their minds so that they can build on dreams that would one day will come true. Building these relationships over the summer with kids helps us to help them construct the many paths that they'll have to build in their life. The more we can show and encourage them, the better tools for the job that they will have. If you miss the training, you miss the favorite part by many. We opened up session just by networking, sitting around and networking. What you see, wait, slip the slide, flip the slide, slide, Lisa, <laughs> Brandon. You're, Am I dead in the water? What's going on? It just takes a minute. You're just going to have to be a little bit patient. It'll turn. <gasps> Patience. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun on our, um, keep going, On um, in our training. Uh, we opened up each session and we sat around and just let you know, we had the uh, chapters, the five chapters of the teen program up there uh, and just sat around and networked about, okay, so if you were having to build a program and you saw the first line, the blueprints of leadership, what would you do? How would you engage your teens? And we just went round robin. Everybody came up to start shooting ideas. It was really great. Some of the people had some wonderful ideas. And we did the same thing with the Literary Foundation and the Demolition. And um, just by looking at the titles, um, what, what could they do? Uh, you know, most of us libraries, we have these books that either have been donated, we can't take. Um, they just won't do, but we can restore them. And this is a perfect way and, and a perfect opportunity to explain to our teens and tweens about our weeding system in the library. You know, um, sometimes they'll think that, uh, you know, we, we, we can use them in craft and, you know, even though it is really hard to see a book cut. Um, this secret compartment book definitely passed my 14-year-old granddaughters um, over the summer. Keep in mind that you are using an X-Acto blade, so it is definitely for older kids. But um, again, with the hint, the glue has to take 42 hour, or 24 hours to dry. So make sure you glue it first. They can cut, but make sure you glue it so they can dry. But she absolutely loved that craft. Um, the under construction graphic that is going to come up in a minute, I love this graphic. As uh, work, working with our youth, we need to recall that this is how they think. Um, I, I had to put this in there. Entertaining them to encourage growth, that's what we do. We entertain them. Going beyond those library walls with a magic Pokemon ball 
that I found on YouTube or Seed Bombs, I love that title, um, might be a snappy way to catch that teen's attention and bring them in. All of these are on my Pinterest page. Um, helping teens build friendships and also that love of reading is what we got to do. Uh, next slide, please. I know it didn't. it's not there. When we go into the children's, um, in the panhandle, <laughs> we don't have the option, as Jana said, we get them from birth to death. So um, on, on these next slides, you know, it, uh, I'm going to do early lit, but also we're, I'm going to do um, children. They, these can either go up or down depending on the type of supplies you use. Uh, for a particular age group. But the CLSP manual this year, I believe everyone will agree, was spot on. Um, you re there really should not be any problems pulling together a super fun program. You know, just brainstorming the sections, you know, from the, think of the flannel boards, the puppet plays, and the crafts, from the three little pigs to the wheels on the bus go round and round, or even the green grass grows all around and around. I mean, this is such a fun, fun um, age group to do. Again, the crafts are found on my Pinterest page, but remember, you can alter the items used. For example, I would not use the gems on the mirror for a toddler program. Some of the materials that we mentioned in training were, you could use pom-poms or stickers or even construction paper cutouts. We have to be flexible with um, our crafts, you know, uh, that's one of our strong points up here in the panhandle. Uh, using the handprint book for preschoolers or even up to second grade. They, second grade could even trace their own hand. But as for the little ones, you know, you need to have them ready made. And we have to be able to, to do all of this. The theme this year is so versatile. Um, as you can see, you can go for the environmental side or you can go for the construction side. It would be a perfect opportunity to impact the kids on our B status. Um, you know, maybe just not sing that song we have for years. You know, I'm taking home a baby bumblebee. <laughs> you know, that one where we splat it and then lick it off and kill it, you know. And <laughs> now we have uh, endangered bees here. So. Anyway, thank you, Linda. You're sweet. Um, the sun catcher that you see is wonderful. Now, you can use that for little kids with the big gems. You could use that for your teens. Um, also, the, the CD scratch-offs for the teens, love, they love them. But some of, the, some of the crafts that we have, the button, was one that was uh, I found, but I'm just really leery of using buttons with little ones. So um, it was a suggestion, and I'm like, no, I don't think so. But next slide, please. For the school kids, you can go so so much with this age group, from the Minecraft and the Legos, um, using straws. We saw a video on YouTube of. They um, gave the kids a, a hundred straws and lots and lots and lots of masking tape. And the kids were having to build a tower that would hold a baseball. And they gave them time, you know, broke them up in little groups, and absolutely um, had a hoot watching this, uh, how, they, how they would transform it, you know. Um, what would you, how would you build that if you were? A kid, you know, it's interesting. Some of their, they have some great ideas. I heard, um, I believe it was uh, one of the other trainers talk about having a marble run. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, I like the one, the marble run with the wholesome underneath the, the marble coaster where you take the edge of those paper plates, the one that has the ridges on it, not the ones that we use all the time for crafts, but the, you know, the really hard, sturdy, fancy ones. Um, you just cut those off and, and loop them through the tubes um, to get that marble run going. So much fun. And then just for a uh, program that you could build a bridge with the kids that come in, just have it sitting out as a quiet maker space program, poking some 
holes into some toilet paper or, excuse me, cardboard tubes. Uh, the thing is, though, that that hole punch, if you see the dimensions from the edge of that tube, that's as far as that hole punch will reach, trust me. Uh, but it's a lot of fun on those things. Uh, cleaning out your storage shed couldn't have come at a better time, or your closet if you don't have a storage shed. In the beginning of when everybody came in and got together on their desk, I had a quarter circle that I handed out to everybody. And I just told them while we were waiting to start, I said, go ahead and decorate that. Decorate that the way you feel the best way that represents you. You know, and so we had, you know, the, the librarians were very creative. Um, some were just scribble scrabble, some were very creative. But what we did is at the end of each training, I had, when we broke, you know, had a break for lunch, I put them on the board. And by the end of the training, we were telling a story. And it was just so beautiful that even though we're all different and we all come to the table with different ideas and different uh, ways of life that we have, you know, we are, we are all um, put together to build a better world. We're all here. We can, when we come together, build a better world. I would do this with every age group, except, of course, my little ones, you know, my knee knockers now. Um, my baby babies, but this is a wonderful way to advertise and to market, you know, each time you get together at different branches with the kids, do something like this and have everybody put one on there. Um, just a thought. Uh, transforming your library. One of the things that I saw was the old, old reliable taking a roll and smear and peanut butter on it and then roll it into the dirt seed, bird seed. But you have to be really, really careful because of peanut allergies. You know, definitely keep that in advance, you know, in your in your back of your mind. Your steam and stem projects are ripe for this. One thing that we did in the training was we took some glossy star card stock paper and cut it bookmark size, you know, with the hole punched in the top. First, I added a little bit of shaving cream to one of those round frozen tray dinners, the food dinners, and added a few drops of um, food coloring and swirled it, you know, got it marbled like. And then I had them press the bookmark in it. And with an old library card, we scraped off the shaving cream, which it dries instantly. And voila, they had a uh, uh, a bookmark for themselves, you know, and it smelled really good, by the way. Uh, also for transformation, milk cartons we collected from the school. You can collect from the school, and you can make bird and or fairy houses, you know. Um, the ideas are absolutely endless here. And like I said, you know, most of my ideas are many more on my Pinterest page. Um, you can always email me. Um, I, I, I love to talk, as you can tell. I have no problem sharing the love. Uh, we're all here for the kids. So if you have any questions at all, just let me know. Thank you. Y'all have fun this summer. Thanks, Cedra. Thanks so much. Um, I really liked um, you, you mentioned that you didn't do the button activity that you had on your slide earlier. I found that yes. kind of interesting for older kids. What do you think? Oh, definitely with the older kids. Um, but keep in mind in the panhandle, you know, we have all kids age levels. And so it, it, it kind of worries me. I mean, I guess if it was with supervision, you know, that would be great for the older kids. Because it's it's kind of like an edge of sketch or something, you know. You just make all these designs, <laughs> like string art, you know, but bigger. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Um, Y'all have any discussion points or um, things that you would like to talk about or questions? We're doing pretty good time, although we have a few more things. Yeah, we. Have, we have. 
Uh, Linda was saying that uh, Zedra's Pinterest page rocks and went ahead and gave us a link to that, as well as gave us a few links to various YouTube channel items. Thank you. That's very because Linda is awesome. That's why. <laughs> she is. Um, and there, you can find a lot of, of the summer. If you look under um, CSLP, um, Build a Better World, on Pinterest, you're going to find a ton of different activities and opportunities for programs that y'all have already mentioned today and programs that last month Aaron mentioned, um, as well as Jonathan. But there's also a whole um, lot of really great ideas um, that you can utilize um, and even pin to your own Pinterest board if you've got it. Mm -hmm. And Linda does have a question for us. She was asking, what about ideas for summer reading incentives? Well, that's a really good question. I think I'll let the ladies take that over as I'm against incentives personally. but um. I, I am too, Jana, actually, you know, because the kids and I have so much fun. However, um, with it be building, one of the incentives that we bought this year um, were rulers. Imagine one of, um, I believe it was Olivia talking about uh, measuring everything. So we bought little wooden rulers that have Build a Better World on it with the library information on it. So Because that's not quite an incentive. It's useful. It's a useful tool. So <laughs> I didn't feel bad about that. And we have another question from Linda that says, um, I mean, how do you get these kids reading this summer? A reading log? I know one of the things we did in um, when I was in the library in Tullahoma, Tennessee, we actually got the teens to um, make book bags for the younger ones. Um, so they were learning a craft. And then the little ones, when they got uh, 10 on their reading list, they would get a book bag that had been made by the teens. What kind of book? What material? Uh, it was whatever fabric the community would donate to us, oh. and so they were various patterns of all kinds of things. We even had a few that I thought the kids wouldn't want at all. They were just ugly, gray, tweed material, and those were the first ones chosen. The little ones thought it was the coolest thing, and they used fabric markers and decorated them however they wanted. That's a fabulous idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if you have, um, you know, increments of... Having, if you get donations from local ice cream places or McDonald's for like a soda or an ice cream cone or um, whatever community um, agencies are out there or stores that would be willing to donate um, little coupons, mm -hmm. um, you could make up coupons and have, if you have a friend's bookstore, you can make it if the child reads 10 books or 5 books or comes into the library and attends a program and has read a book for each program they've attended, they could get a, you know, a friend's dollar coupon to purchase a book. Mm -hmm. Jana? Yeah. Jana, um, what we have done in the past, um, I have approached Wendy's, has the little, um, uh, oh, what are their shakes called? They're not Frosty. shakes. They, Thank you. The little wooden frosty nickels, and um, McDonald's will and Burger King will hand out um, coupons for French fries or a small drink or whatever. Um, and Linda, I don't give them to them as a reading log. I give them if they come to the program. That is something that I just hand out like like cookies for them to come to the programs. They they don't. They don't, I don't use the reading log. I give it that for them coming in because if I can get them in, they will read. But you could also so. combine the two. I mean, you could have, if they came to a program, they could, you know, if they've read a book, they could get something. It just depends on the, the community. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Google also has a reading program. And so if you go to uh, your local Pizza Hut, you can ask them for the uh, bookmarks. And in order for the kids to get a free pizza, they have to have five books on their bookmark. Yeah, Barnes and, and those kids love those pizzas. They sure do. I, I would love one day nationally, and I think I may bring this up at CSLP, is 
there are places. Barnes and Noble has a national reading program that they put out amongst their stores, and it's, there's no individual store adaptation. It's from the national market. I imagine Pizza Hut is the same thing. Yes, they are. I would think that if they could combine all of these, that would be such an awesome thing because the child could read, and if they read so many at a certain level, they could get this. If they read so many at another level, they could get this, you know, and that would be a really great, concept and idea for cooperation, but we know that's never going to happen, don't we ladies? <laughs> of course it will. <laughs> Olivia, um, what do y'all do? And Olivia, it looks like you got yourself muted, so click on that unmute. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, we have just a reading bookmark that we use because we found out with the logs that the moms would come in and say, why are you making us fill out these logs? And that discouraged them from coming. And nobody needs the, really the, you know, the numbers of books that they read, right? Do those numbers go anywhere? No. Not for me. Nope. Nope. Uh, it's so, completely for your local level. Um, nope. We don't have anything like that here. So I said, I just want you to read. I don't care how much you read. I want you to read every day. So they bring in their bookmarks that shows that they've read something every day. We don't ask any questions about the book. We used to ask them, well, what was your favorite part of the book? And the moms would say, why are you making us do this? It's our summertime. So, uh, but included on the bookmark that we're going to have uh, every week, we, we take in the bookmark and then we give them a new one, is to ask them to do a random act of kindness or to tell us about the kind things that they did that week, just to make them more mindful of it. Um, and that's basically what we do. When they bring in their bookmark, they get an incentive. And then we have an end of summer party this year. We're tying it in with uh, Harry Potter's birthday. But it's dressed as your favorite book character, and it's going to be a dance party. Yeah, just bring your blast bookmark with you, and you get a free admission. But uh, I was going to say that, uh, Oh, the teens, the one who reads the most, gets a Kindle Fire, because they're so cheap nowadays, and our friends give us a budget for that. So now I think this year we're going to do for the elementary age kids, too. So the one who reads the most will get a Kindle Fire. Also for the teens, the cooperative provides gift cards. We get a stack of gift cards that we send to the library and the cooperative can use how they want to. So I just randomly select a teen reader that week, give them a call, and take a book. Uh, one of the gift cards of their choice. And we usually get Hot Topic, Starbucks, Panera, Barnes & Noble, like Walmart or Target. The Hot Topic ones are the most popular. Uh -huh. Now, um, the local top Hot Topic store, um, if uh -huh. I'm remembering correctly, generally has, if you send them a letter, they've got about five gift cards they're allowed to send out um, a month. <laughs> or, uh, <non> <laughs> um, but Are it you depends on your story. Whenever I contact Hot Topic, they refer me to the national level, and the national level, they're not as helpful. They're more into matching grants for big things. Okay. I don't understand the little things are more important to me than the big things. Well, who knows? Yeah, it happens every so often. But you can get great donations from Lowe's, Home Depot, Harbor Freight. Mm -hmm. And those would be great places to hit up this summer. That's true. I'm already contacted. Uh, what is it? it used to be owned by Henkels. Now it's SureTech for the DUCK company, duck brand, duct tape. They always send out a package of duct tape. Yeah, they'll do that. That's for sure. Well, um, I really appreciate everybody. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your um, great workshops that you've done. Um, thank you for participating on this. And um, you all have a great summer and look forward to hearing and seeing all the fabulous pictures that you're going to send me so I can post them. Right? Right. We will. Remind us. Remind, yeah, send us a little email reminder. Every, Every week. week. Glad. <laughs> but we like personal email reminders, not the group one. <laughs> Catherine's very like personal email. Okay. I have a habit of being deleted. Thanks, guys. Have a great Thank day. you. Bye. Thank Bye. you, guys. Bye. Good summer.